welcome to the today's topic so it is the end of the classification method we will check other classification methods today myself priyanka gupta i am working as assistant professor in department of computer science and engineering data science at institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad i am going to cover the topics today that are other classification methods that are the k nearest neighbor algorithm genetic algorithm rough uh, set algorithm and fuzzy set approach the prediction and regression in that we will cover the linear and non linear regression let us start the k nearest neighbor algorithm so in this type of algorithm there will be the k nearest neighbor so what is uh, nearest neighbor so what is uh, there will be the house in um, If, if, if around that who will be the neighbor that will be the nearest neighbor so in that uh, algorithm also this k nearest algorithm will be there k is the number of uh, uh, neighbors right so k will be the number of neighbors that is residing near the near the that home the house so same uh, things we uh, that will be uh, that will be followed in uh, this algorithm also so all the examples that will be correspond to the n the dimensional space that is n dimensional space that is nothing but the uh, space of the neighbor they are uh, there in residing the nearest neighbor th that will be defined how we, we have to calculate that there will be the formula that, uh, that will be the major, there will be the major euclidean distance euclidean distance on the basis of that the distance will be measured that will be the distance the uh, first uh, first point and the second point that will be the starting point the starting uh, starting uh, point of the neighbor and that will be the ending point of the same neighbor so in uh, 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 from this formula we are going to uh, uh, we have to uh, check the measure of the distance for the nearest neighbor so the target function the, there will be the target function that could be discrete as well as the real valued so uh, uh, for that we are going to check the neighbors that will be the either the discrete value either it will be the real value the discrete value if will be there the k and n and the k nearest neighbor that is going to return the most common value that is uh, among the k training examples k uh, that will be the k training examples and that will be near to the x of q that will be the the point will be the nearest to x q the all the nearest neighbor will be there if the uh, if this point if from the point x q we are going to calculate the nearest neighbor suppose this so uh, if there will be some uh, points in uh, some uh, classification so from this neighbor to this neighbor what will be the distance on the uh, on the basis of manhattan uh, uh, on the basis of euclidean we are going to measure that so that will be the x q that will be nothing but the x q point so for k n n uh, if there, there will be the real value uh, uh, real value will be their attributes so for a given unknown tuple uh, on the basis of that that is going to return that is going to give us the mean value the mean of that suppose uh, if x values are there so x bar x mean of that it is going to give us for the k nearest neighbor for the other how many points uh, will be there for each points that is going to give the all the points mean value all the points mean value for the real value attribute and if the, the, that will be the distance weighted the uh, uh, on the basis of distance weighted we have uh, uh, on the basis of that algorithm we have to check for weight so weight will be measured for the each of the point each of the point so weight the contribution of each of k k is the number of uh, neighbors uh, in the that uh, particular area and according to their distance according to their distance that is going to check uh, from the x q point x q point so the weight will be measured that is going to give the if there will be the greater weight that will be the closest neighbor 
if suppose uh, two of the points uh, suppose um, one weight uh, weight weight w1 is equal to 0.5 if and weight 2 w2 is equal to 0.4 so what is what will be the nearest the the point 0.4 will be nearest to that so that then we have to consider the greatest weight for that particular point particular point for the closer neighbor so that will be the this point will be the closer neighbor for the xq point right so in the distance weighted we have to check about the yeah, greater major greater weight for that now so some some of the time there there, there could have the noisy data there could have the noisy data we have to remove that by averaging the k nearest neighbor so on that uh, on the uh, if there will be that situation we have to take the average of the each of the neighbor each, uh, uh, average of the all the points neighbors so that we can re remove the noisy data for that now uh, dimensionality can, can be there dimensionality is nothing but the that 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 can have the two plane that can have the three plane so on the, the what is the curse of that di dimensionality so distance between the uh, different neighbors that could terminate it, that could be dominated by the irregular attributes so in that plane, there can have the irregular uh, attribute or value can uh, so can have uh, there. But on the basis of that, we have to we we don't have to uh, exclude that. We uh, include that value. We have to exclude that attribute. So that is the curse of dimensionality. We have we don't have to make that um, include that particular value as a neighbor. So to overcome that uh, type of dimensionality curse we have to uh, stress the axis we have to stress uh, if there is a 2d plane x that, that is x axis that is y axis so we have to stress the axis that the x axis we have to stress and y uh, axis we have to stress stretch so that the point can be eliminated so the elimination of the least uh, relevant value we have to remove we have to prune that so that that, that that will be the read of dimensionality curves so another algorithm is there that is genetic algorithm uh, apart from the other uh, classification algorithm so genetic algorithm that will be the based on the biological evaluation the, that is an analogy of biological evaluation that is nothing but that is depend on some of the some of the biological terms that if suppose the um, there is a initial population is uh, population is nothing but the bunch of uh, the, the bunch of people the uh, the area of some people so the population is created consisting of the randomly generated rule so in that uh, gen genetic algorithm we are calling that as a uh, the area the uh, what the point we are calling as a initial population so population is nothing but randomly why why we are going to uh, uh, generate some of the association rules that will be the randomly generated rules so some of the uh, important terminology uh, is there for to initiate that so the first is the, each rule have to be represented by a string of bits so some of the string will be there like uh, here we have uh, in this example suppose we have uh, chosen as 100 so that is uh, the whole of the rule it, it is written here if a1 in bracket and a2 then c2 so can be encoded that is in one bracket from a1 to as and from can be encoded as 100 that is the another rule that is the another quoted rule for that so uh, in the this sim simple example suppose that uh, the samples is uh, given for training set that is described by two boolean um, boolean attribute that is a1 here and that is a2 here so two of the values are there a1 a2 that is boolean attributes and there are two classes on that basis of that that is going to be classified c1 and c2 to classify these are the genetic uh, we can say attributes so there will be the some situation uh, if there will be the uh, the uh, uh, an attribute will be the k that will be the greater than two values then only that k bits can be used the k bits can be taken out so 
in that example we have seen the training set uh -huh. is there there is a1 a2 2 um, boolean values are there on the basis of that we are going to write the that same code so here we have uh, used the uh, st string of bits so that was the 1 0 0 so these these are the this is one bit 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 so three bits we have used for that right now Based on the notion, based on the, that uh, written uh, value, the written rule, the survival of the fittest we have to find out. So, what will be the fittest rule to survive that we have to find out for that genetic algorithm? So, a new population will be formed. formed uh, so, if we are able to uh, choose the fittest rule, fittest rules for the survival, then we have to go for the population formation that is having the fittest rule fittest rule so that will be the the perfect perfect rule that will be the perfect rule the perfect uh, rule for the new population and their offsprings so what 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 is offspring uh, offsprings here we will see now the fittest of rule as i have said we have to find out the fittest survival of the rule the rule it is going to be fittest for all the situation in the all the situation that the, uh, on the that will be represented by its classification accuracy so how it is going to be safe fit uh, this rule is fit the, on the basis of uh, we are going to measure the accuracy for that and uh, from the set of examples so uh, for, for, for the same example if we will take if a1 and not a2 same example that has been written in uh, another type so if a1 and that is and not a2 so earlier it was a1 and a2 then c2 so that can be encoded with the 100 that is as a string as 100 that was earlier so if uh, here we can see we can say that is left uh, le leftmost bits is representing the a1 and a2 in the left hand side that rule we have to classify in the in the uh, in the form of consequent and antecedent so the antecedent will be the a1 and a2 here a1 and a2 attribute that will be the leftmost bits and respectively the rightmost bits the bits will be there c1 and c2 so here only c1 is presented so c1 will be the c1 will be the consequent and that will be the rightmost bit for that so that is that is going to classify for c2 class now similarly if same rule has been written in another form so if and if not a1 and not a2 then c1 so if that that has been written so here we have to take uh, a1 and not a2 and a1 is not in the left hand side that is going to classify into c1 so uh, that will be classified into the 001 string value so that is going to classify for uh, c1 so if the uh, suppose if the attribute is there that is having the k value in simple simple example so if k values are there the k, when k will be uh, greater than the two value then k bits may be used to encode the attribute value so that is the that is the condition for the uh, uh, while we are going to write the this rule so that we have seen in the formation of association rules also but here some difference we have to encode it with the with the string bits so here we have to check the if k values are there for attribute uh, so if k will be the greater than 2 then only it is going to satisfy then only k bits will be encoded with the attribute value and the classes can be encoded into similar form so the, the attribute has been encoded in the form of the, the k greater than 2 the k is greater than 2 and also the classes will be encoded with the same fashion now based on the notion of uh, survival of fetus we have seen a new population is going to form that is having the fittest rule into the current population so the rule the present the uh, the present rule be, will be there 
the present rule will be there and that in that we have to check for the new new rule new survival rule the fittest rule so that will be the fittest rule so the fittest rule will be for the that current population that is having the that is having the offspring of these rules these rules so what have been written uh, presently from that particular particular population so um, also we can say the fittest of the rules is assessed by its classification accuracy on a set of training examples and uh, the office screen that is created by the applying genetic operator so here we have seen the uh, one word of spring so that has been created by applying some of the genetic operators on that particular rule so that uh, how we have, we have we have to uh, apply that genetic operator genetic operator there will be the two there will be the two methods the first will be the crossover we have to write the crossover rules for that and then also we can also use the mutation for that so there are two two rules the offspring offspring will be created from the from the genetic operators okay right? so in now we will see the crossover in crossover the sub strings so if there will uh, have written some string from the sub string uh, from the pair of rules we have to swap we have to change the rules from the other uh, uh, words we have to swap that from the rule and then then we have to make the new pair of rules so that are the basics of that uh, crossover uh, if we will take the example we will see how to uh, do that how to uh, check the uh, substrings how to take the substrings from that that particular rules and how to make the new pair from that particular rule as a new pair of the same rule so in the crossover we have to swap the rules in the mutation uh, as well as um, we have to randomly select the bits for the new rule for the new rule and then as uh, the string can be inverted inverted is uh, nothing but that that has been uh, changed so uh, if we will going to randomly select the obviously the string can be changed so the process of this uh, mutation and crossover that is going to work on the genetic operator and then it is going to make the new rule new fittest rule now the process of generating these new population that is based on the um, population uh, prior population that was the current population and the prior population were there that will be the continue until the population p that is going to evolve that is going to make the new rule evolve is nothing but here we have to check for the new fittest rule so for the each rule in p that is going to satisfy a pre specified fitness threshold now so in new mutation we have to check for the randomly selected bits that will be on the based of the rules so the new rule will be the new is in the new rule the strings can be inverted that can be changed so the crossover and uh, mutation is nothing but that will be work on the genetic operator as in uh, crossover we have to swap the some of the particular uh, we can say words and uh, in mutation we have to randomly select the bits so these were the two uh, genetic uh, operators to use with the with, for the for the purpose of genetic algorithm now the process of generating that new population that on the basis of the uh, past uh, population were there old population uh, we can say prior population rules were there that will be continue and then that is going to again change it again swap again uh, do the same thing that is going to evolve that word is nothing uh, evolve that is going to check for the fittest rule and then uh, where we can see each rule in the p is going to satisfy the prescribed fitness threshold so for the fitness of the rule we have to go through with the fitness threshold that is nothing but that is the that is the that is that is a nothing but the that is a some rule written on the basis of that formula we have to check for the threshold that is pre specified so we have to set that pre specified fitness value 
now the gen genetic algorithm that are easily parallelizable and have been used for classification as well as that can also be used for the optimization of the same rule so if we are going to uh, take the some fittest rule the some fittest rule will be there in, in example we will see so if we have chosen a fittest rule then after that also we can optimize that particular rule so that can be that the particular uh, rule can be in sort so like this we have to uh, use for this algo uh, genetic algorithm in data mining uh, in broad they they may have be used to evaluate the fitness of the other algorithm so genetic algorithm is going to use for the optimization as well as for the fitness of the same algorithm or other algorithms so that was the genetic algorithm now we will go through with the rough set approach so rough set approach is nothing in uh, that is based on the rough set theory rough set theory can be used for classification that is going to discover about the structural membership within the noisy data that is impre imprecise data the data that is having the missing values right so on that type of values we have to uh, go through with the rough set theory so rough the, uh, the names suggest that the rough rough data rough data right rough data imprecise data imprecise data right so it applies on the discrete value attributes but uh, on the continuous valued attribute it can be also discretized so first we have to discretize that and then we have to use that particular continuous valued attribute on, uh, as a discrete value now the rough set theory is based on the establishment of the equivalence class so as we have seen in the uh, set theory the equivalence classes will be there for uh, set theory so here the uh, rough set theory is uh, based on the equivalence class within the given training data so that data that has given to train the model the data that has been given to tra train the model the data we know the data we have in the database data set so uh, suppose we are having the data set so all the data tuple all the data set that is forming an equivalence class suppose that all the data is forming an equivalence class so that will be the in discriminable the term in this cadenable right so the data is called as a discriminable that is the sample are identical the sample is similar but with respect to the attribute that is going to describe the data so the that uh, the, the term means that the all the sample is having the identical values identical attribute but that is having the attribute that is going to describe all of the data all of the data right so that the, that type of data will be in discriminable right now the given real world example is there the, the if data will be there real, from the real world it is uh, common that some of the classes that cannot be that cannot be uh, distinguished that cannot we cannot discriminate that they can cannot be separate in terms of available attribute so some of the situation we cannot uh, replace that so the sort of the set theory that can be uh, going to use as a approximate a roughly equivalent classes so that uh, we we are going to write as a roughly roughly that is going to define the equivalent class if you are going to write the uh, roughly that means the rough sets are there the a rough set definition uh, is for uh, a given class c if uh, the given class is c that is approximated by two of the sets so that will be divided into lower approximation and higher upper uh, approximation of the same class c so there will be the two sets so the lower sets of approximation of c that is going to consist all of the data tuples all of the data sets that is having in the database based on the knowledge of attribute that are contained to the belong to c without any of the noisy data any of the imprecise data so this the, the all the type of data will be in the lower approximation now we will go into the high, uh, upper approximation so upper approx approximation of c that is going to consist all of the tuples 
uh, that that is going to based on the knowledge of attributes mm -hmm. and then cannot be described uh, uh, as not belonging to the class C. So the data that will not uh, going to belong to the C. So all of uh, the uh, all the ambiguity data that uh, that can be there. That can be there. Now the lower and up, uh, upper approximation for a class C that is shown in the figure. If uh, uh, this in this figure we can see that that is the upper approximation. That is upper. That uh, that is uh, that is. That is the lower. That is the lower. So like this, that is the lower. That is the lower. So in that part, the upper upper approximation will be there. In that part, lower approximation will be there. So uh, the lower and uh, upper approximation uh, where each of the rectangular region representing an equivalence class. So where uh, uh, from where that is uh, going to see the so the the equivalence class there can be the the equivalence class there can be the approximation now the decision rules can be generated for each of the class typically the decision table is used to represent the route so now some of the decision rules can be can be formed and that will be uh, that will be shown in the decision table so the, the in this figure we can see the uh, set of tuples of class c using the upper and lower approximation on the set of c so the rectangular uh, region that is representing the rectangular the equivalence class so that is the uh, uh, that is the lower and that is upper so the, the, this is nothing but that is the dotted line is the that, that is the equivalence class of the rough set so finding the minimum subset uh, we have uh, some of the time we have to uh, find the minimum subset also that is the redux that we call as a reduct of that particular class so that having the attributes for feature selection some of the class labels we have to choose from that uh, the model have to choose from that so that will be the np hard so np hard np hard uh, uh, values will be there that when that, uh, on the basis of uh, that particular attribute we cannot just that is a not belong to that but that is going to belong that so some type of np hard values will be there but a discriminatively matrix that is going to store the differences between the attribute value and in the each pair of data tuples so the difference between these attribute value uh, and each pair of data tuple that will be storing into the discriminability matrix that is going to reduce the computation intensity so at the end of the rough set the this uh, np hard situation can be there so we have to we have to remove that type of uh, 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 np hard situation so for that we have to use the discriminability matrix on the basis of that that is going to uh, reduce the computation intensity so th the intensity of the computation will be low now we will go into the fuzzy set approach so fuzzy set is nothing but fuzzy logic will be there fuzzy is nothing but uh, what are the value will be there, there between 0 to 1 we have to standardize with the that value between 0 to 1 so fuzzy logic uses the truth value between the 0 and 1 0 and 1 so 0 and 1 so that can be the in the point point 0.1 point 0.2 point 0.3 2.89 like that so that will be the membership graph that will be the membership value actually so if there will be the point 0.2 point 0.3 point so these are the nothing but the membership values so that can be uh, uh, that can be seen in the in the membership graph also so the rule based system for the uh, this uh, classification that is having the disadvantages that is going to uh, evolve the uh, sharp cutoffs or uh, we can say continuous attributes so on the, for that we have to choose the fuzzy fuzzy values fuzzy logic values that is having a truth values so if attribute values that is converted to the fuzzy values that i have said uh, we have to convert those values from 0 to 1 that is having the membership values 0, 0.1 to 0.9 so for example uh, if the income is mapped into the discrete category if income is uh, uh, one class level is there class level is there income income 
and the salary has been divided into the low, medium, and uh, we can say high. So these are the three categories are there. So the, those we have to change into the fuzzy values. So that can be that can be changed into the 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5 like the uh, minimum and higher values. So that will be the uh, mapped with the discrete category, right? So like this we have to change the fuzzy values. For a given sa new sample, more than one fuzzy value may apply. So that can also be the combination of the two membership values can be there. Each of the applicable rule that is going to contribute a vote. One vote for each of the value. One vote will be there for each of the value. And that will be going to contribute in the membership. In the membership for the some category. Now. In this example, in this figure, if we will see here in the in the x axis, the income is there that is having the from 10,000 to 70,000 values. There are the some um, records are there, the seven records are there 10,000 to 70,000. 70, and the y axis that is having the fuzzy membership that is between the 0 0.5 to 1, 0 to 1 actually. 0.5 in the in between the middle of that so 0 to 1 so in that we have to categorize the income that is having the low medium and high low medium and high so now the if there will be the some um, suppose this in from this figure we can uh, understand about the how we are categorizing the different fuzzy values now the 20000 uh, that that has been the that the, from the 20000 some of the um, members are there some of the values are there that is going to be uh, min minimum that is uh, the minimum uh, salary is 20 to 50000 Lo the lower salary is 10000 uh, 0 to 30000 the high high is there the, that is having the, the high values that is having the 40 to 70000 the that is income so like that we have to categorize these of the values in between what are the uh, different membership values will be there uh, on the on the basis of that that uh, that uh, membership only is going to define so typically the truth value for each of the predicted category that is going to be summed up that is going to be that is going to be merged and that sum can be that that is having to be combined so the above by the above rules that has been um, seen for the low high and one uh, one membership as their medium so for that a customer who has a job for at least uh, two years that is going to that will receive credit for her income that is say 50000 but not if it is 49000 so, if 50,000 salary will be there, then only the rule is going to satisfy the, uh, here we, we will see the 50,000. But uh, be, below that only the membership degrees were, will be there. The degrees will be there. So, the rule will be for not 50,000, the rule will be for 49,000. Now, such of the harsh um, thresholding sometimes can be unfair if we are going to write like uh, for 50,000 we have to go for 49,000 set so uh, instead of that we can discretize these of the income into categories so what uh, the categories were there the low income high medium income and high income so three categories are there and then we have to apply the fuzzy logic to allow the fuzzy membership fuzzy threshold fuzzy boundary to define each of the category so for the fuzzy set, we have to use the these of the thresholded to to uh, to assign the sum of the membership degree, sum of the membership value for each of the uh, each of the category. If there are some discre discretized values are there. Now rather than having a because the, there were the fifty thousand income, but we have to check for we have to write rule for the forty nine thousand. But between that, we can have the low, medium, and high sets for that, that uh, difference that that type of difference we can have the that of the thresholds now rather than having a precise cutoff between that uh, those of the category low medium high fuzzy logic uses the truth value that is going to be in between 0 to 1 that is having the 0 0.1 to 0 0.9
so that is going to represent the degree of membership that is nothing the point one is calling the degree of membership degree that is calling as a degree of membership and that is having the certain value for the given category so for point one that will have the some other category point two some other like this the degree of membership will be divided into the nine parts now the each category is going to represent the one fuzzy set so for each category now will be the fuzzy set different fuzzy set now we will have the nine fuzzy sets from point nine to point nine so if the sum of the uh, values is uh, falling in between so th on the basis of that the uh, how many fuzzy sets will be there that will be uh, decided upon that so hence uh, with the fuzzy logic uh, we we have to cap we have to capture the uh, notion that is uh, the income were 50000 but uh, in less 49000 we have to check so more or less high although not as high as the income of 50000 so below the 50000 and 49000 uh, up the 49000 we have to go for that type of fuzzy sets fuzzy set values so fuzzy logic system is typically providing the graphical tool to going to help the users to converting attributes value to fuzzy truth value so that will having the 0.9 to 0.1 to 0.9 uh, logic uh, membership values so that um, nowadays some of the we can say some of the uh, watches, some of the refrigerators, some of the washing machine that is going to, that is working on the base of these of the fuzzy logics. So on the basis of these uh, fuzzy logics that is going to be called as automated, that they are the automated systems. Now the uh, prediction comes. So the prediction is the numeric prediction. So that will be the task of predicting the continuous value. The, for the given output so that is going to construct a model that is going to use a model to predict the continuous or we can say ordered values for a given input so that is a base of that now for example if we may wish to predict about the salary of college students so college graduates with having the 10 years of experience, work experience, uh, they are having the potential sales, uh, someone having the potential sales of a new product for the given price, for the given price. So by far, uh, for that we, uh, we are going to use a prediction. Now, by far the most uh, uh, widely used, most, mostly used approach is numeric prediction. So hence we are using this prediction, but some of the times numeric prediction will be carried forward because all the things will be based on the data set. So that will be the numeric type of values, continuous values. So that is the that is going to based on the regression, a statistical methodology that was developed by the Sir Francis Galton. He, that, that, he was in the 1822 to 1911. That was he was the mathematician that who have the cousin of the Charles Darwin. So Charles Darwin who have developed the evaluation theory. So the mathematician Franz, Francis Galton he have discovered about the that uh, regression. So regression is nothing the, the, the that is having the that is having the relationship between the two of the values. So how it is going to be carried forward. So in fact, many of the text, uh, some of the time that is having, the, uh, so, so the prediction is going to use as a numeric prediction or regression some of the times. So uh, however, we have seen some of the classification techniques also, as we have seen the back propagation support vector machine, we have not seen, but we have seen the K nearest neighbor. So that can be adopted, that can be used for the prediction. So prediction is different from the classification basically, that is not, not a classification. Classification is going to refer to predict the categorical class level. But in that prediction, we are going to use the continuous values functions, continuous values attributes. So the major method for the prediction is regression. The regression is also two of the types that is linear and nonlinear. So that is uh, the regression is nothing but the, that is the model to uh, that is going to model the relationship between one or more independent or predictor variables. So the there will be the two type variable that will be the independent, independent and dependent. 
so for that uh, independent will be there for that class level we have to we have to we have to predict about that and on the uh, on uh, on which of the class level we have to predict about the that independent variable so this will be the two types of variable the relationship is we are going to model we are going to so so that will be the that will be the regression so here comes linear regression so linear regression is nothing but a straight line regression analysis that is going to involve suppose the x and y axis are there here the one uh, one uh, regression line is there for some of the uh, we can say some of the uh, sales patterns some of the sales patterns are there for that that is the most best fit line most best fit line the all of the values that is comes fall in this line so that is the <coughs> straight line regression so that is involving the response variable y and having the single predictor variable x so the regression model y will be the linear function of x that is saying the that is going to model the y on the basis of linear function of x so that will be that will be shown into the form of y is equal to b plus wx that is the formula of linear regression that is for the best line here the y is the constant here the y is the constant and the b and w here b and w is nothing but that are the regression coefficients and x is nothing but that is the that is the response variable or dependent variable y is also called as a independent variable independent variable that is constant now if we will going to add the weight on that if linear regression is there the formula is there we find out from that straight line and then if we are going to add the weights if w and b thought of the weights so if we are going to write the same of the formula so y will be the y is equal to w W zero plus W one into x. So like this, same formula will be will be changed into the weight. So here the y intercept will be the W o and W one will be the slope of the that was the slope. That was the slope. So on the basis of that, that uh, that will be the regression co coefficients. So these are the coefficients are there regression coefficients b and x. Here the W uh, W one. So in these uh, as coefficient can be solved by method of least square. So that will be very very complicated. That will be uh, that will not be solved. But for to solve that we have to use the least square method. So least square is going to optimize that that same num same of the coefficient. So that is going to estimate the best fitting straight line. On the basis of that only we can. Have the that straight line. So first we have to put these of the values, uh, uh, the x, uh, b and x values on that, b, b and w uh, x values on that, and then if we are not getting the fittest uh, line, then we have to go for the least square method, and then we are going to estimate, we are going to optimize that base fit line. Now we have to minimize the error also. so that was the nothing but the, we have to minimize that error what we have said so in the actual data and what is going to estimate that in from that line so in the table we will have some of the class labels some of the particular uh, particular uh, attributes will be there on the basis of that we are going to plot this line but if this line is not uh, we can say straight then we have to go for the least square method as well as we have to minimize that error so then we have to we will get the best fit line for that regression now the multiple uh, linear regression will be there if there will be the, the there will have the more than one predictor value if we have to predict about more than two uh, more than one value if there will be the two or more values so the regression coefficient uh, that will be measured by w1 is equal to summation uh, i is equal to 1 to mod d X one minus x uh, x far, uh, far uh, into y y i minus y bar divided by same uh, uh, summation of i is equal to one to mod d uh, uh, that is having the in bracket x i minus x bar that will be the square of that. 
so now that the w1 value we can find the weight of the w1 we can find from that and w0 that we will find from y, y bar minus w1 and x bar here now so x bar and y bar x y uh, y bar and x bar is nothing but the mean of the that particular points of the mean of the that particular the, some of the at, uh, we can say records are there so that are nothing but the mean of that uh, independent value and mean of the that independent values so um, that will be the uh, x1 x2 to xd x uh, mod d and y will be the mean, mean value of the y1 y2 to yd now for example if we will have the 2d data two dimensional data we may have the y is equal to w0 plus w1 into x1 plus w2 into x2 so here the two that will be extended from the from the two one value to two value so there the two planes will be there so for that we have to add the other two two weights two of the weights two of the uh, predictor uh, variables and wait for that so solvable by extension of least square method and uh, we can use the sas and s plus for that if there will be the if we will not get the best fit line here so we have to use the least square method uh, or we can say the sas and s plus these are the some softwares are there so we can use to uh, optimize these of the best fit line many of the non non linear functions can be transformed into the above so some of the non linear functions can al also be used as a as a predictor now non linear regression so some of the non linear regression uh, models can be modeled by a pol polynomial functions so pol polynomial regression model can be can be changed into the linear regression model so first we have to change the that particular model into the linear regress uh, regression model for example if we are having the uh, y is equal to w0 plus w1 uh, x plus w2 x2 here one w2 x2 plus w3 x3 so we have to convert that into the uh, linear form so that will be the x2 is equal to x2 x3 is equal to x3 so now the uh, formula will be for predictor the y is equal to w0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 so that was uh, so uh, that that seems like a same but that is not same we have to change the uh, values into the linear linear form so from that uh, real world example we can say this of the transformation so other functions that is having the power function that is uh, that can also that we have also to change into the linear model then we are going to say that uh, for, uh, use the, that for the regression model some of the models that is having the uh, interactable non linear that is having the exponential values so for them also we have to change them into the linear function now the possi uh, we have to we have to check we have to obtain we have to only check for the least square estimates uh, if we are not getting the uh, uh, best fit line so through the extensive calculation of some of the formula will be there on the basis of this formula we have to optimize that uh, particular function so that was all about the other classification models uh, so uh, now we have covered all the classification methods till now thank you for watching like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates